Hello, I'm Anne Georgie, a final year medical student from Father Muller Medical College. Today, I'm going to present the case of a 45-year-old of a female, a young teacher who came to the casualty with chest pain. Panic attack, GERD, costochondritis, let's see. The chief complaint was two episodes of chest pain, which started two hours ago. The chest pain was located over the central chest. It occurred suddenly while the patient was resting. This chest pain was described as a feeling of pressure present over the chest and it radiated to the back. This patient had two episodes of chest pain, the first at 6.30 and the second at 7.30. Each episode was five to seven minutes long. Pain occurred at rest and was not aggravated by exertion. Each of these episodes spontaneously resolved. There were no associated symptoms including no diaphoresis, no nausea, or vomiting. This patient described this chest pain to be a severity of an 8 out of 10. Past history. This patient has had no similar episodes in the past. There is no history of long travel or prolonged immobilization, no hypertension, no diabetes mellitus, and patient was not taking any medication, including OCPs. This patient has no known allergies to any medication. Family history was insignificant. No family history of coronary artery disease, sudden cardiac death, syncope, connective tissue disorders, or thromboembolic event. This patient had no history of smoking, alcohol consumption, or intravenous drug use, and was physically active. Review of systems was negative. This patient was asymptomatic on presentation, and there were no findings the physical examination, temperature, the patient was afebrile. The pulse was normal and all pulses were felt equally bilaterally. The blood pressure and respiratory rate were normal. Oxygen saturation was 100% on room air. General physical examination was normal. The BMI is 24 and the build is normal. Severe examination showed no visible dilated veins, sinuses, scars, or precordial bulge. The apical impulse appeared to be normal. The JVP was normal. Palpitation, palpation showed no tenderness, no palpable thrill. Apical impulse was normal. Percussion showed no cardiomegaly. On auscultation, S, uh, S1 and S2 were normal. There was no S3, no S4, and no murmurs. No friction rub was detected. Upon systemic examination, everything was normal. There were no findings. Investigations. CBC was normal. Glucose, cholesterol, electrolytes, thyroid, thyroid, liver, and renal function tests were all within normal limits. Urine toxicology screen was negative. ECG showed regular rhythm rate, no axis deviation. However, there were non-specific T wave changes and a poor R wave progression. When troponin levels were taken, it showed a serial increase in troponin levels. Chest x-ray was unremarkable, no cardiomegaly, no widening of the mediastinum. This is the ECG, which shows non-specific T wave changes and poor R wave progression. This patient was diagnosed with an NSTEMI and sent for cardiac catheterization. A coronary angiogram revealed a left anterior descending coronary artery dissection. The diagnosis is spontaneous coronary artery dissection, or SCAD. SCAD is a non-traumatic, non-iatrogenic separation of the coronary arterial wall. Left anterior descending coronary artery is the most commonly affected. This condition mostly affects females between the ages of 40 to 50 and has a prevalence of 0.1 to 4%. Risk factors include fibromuscular dysplasia, connective tissue disorders, postpartum status, multiparity, hormonal therapy, systemic inflammatory states. Some studies show a presence of a familial SCAD. 20% of cases, like our patient, are idiopathic. Clinical features. SCAD has signs and symptoms that mimic a myocardial infarction. Chest pain is present in 96% of patients who have SCAD. Treatment. 
there is a wide spectrum of treatment for SCAD, which starts from medical management and goes all the way to cardiac transplantation. Other interventions include percutaneous coronary intervention, coronary artery bypass graft, and thrombolytics. Medical management includes long-term management with aspirin and beta blockers. If hyperlipidemia is present, then statins should be added. Short-term use of clopidogrel is recommended. Beta blockers reduce the risk of a future attack. Conservative management is recommended in all cases unless there is ischemia, hemodynamic instability, or left main dissection. On follow-up, the patient was stable and asymptomatic. Chest pain completely resolved. Patient was managed with clopidogrel, beta blockers, and aspirin. At two-week follow-up, patient was still doing well with no recurrent chest pain and no other symptoms. In conclusion, SCAD is a rare, potentially fatal condition that occurs in individuals with no major risk factors. Consider SCAD in a woman presenting with MI symptoms without major cardiovascular risk factors. Patients with SCAD should be under long-term management for prevention of future episodes. These are the references which I used. Thank you.